and energy affects everyone's lives. They don't think about it, but they get up in the morning and perhaps take a shower. That's energy coming from a hot water heater. They turn off an alarm clock first. That's energy coming from electricity. They then go down and perhaps have a slice of toast. That's energy with a toaster. Have some coffee, energy from a stove. And put a key in the ignition and drive to work. Energy from the gas tank of that. I mean, every, every waking moment almost is blessed with abundant energy resources in this country. It doesn't add up to understand that we use one-fourth of all the energy in our country, we produce only 10% of the world's energy, and we have only 3% of the world's energy reserves. If two-thirds of our oil comes from off our shores, from outside of our country, some of it from countries that don't like us very well, what are the consequences of that? Does that represent adequate national security when we are dependent on that amount of oil from others? It does not. That does not represent adequate security for our country. It represents a very deep vulnerability that one day that supply of oil could be cut off to our country and our economy would be flat on its back. Having trade bound so heavily towards imports weakens the U.S. dollar and global economy. It drives up the cost of imported goods, which drives up the cost for American families. Even worse, the U.S. finances its liberal oil spending by borrowing billions from creditors like Saudi Arabia and China. This only makes the U.S. more dependent and vulnerable to other governments. Consumption of natural gas is growing at a faster rate than any other primary energy source in the U.S. Increased demand has increased the prices, and just like oil, increased energy dependence on countries in the Middle East, who hold 40% of the reserves, and Russia, who holds nearly 27%. The benefit of natural gas over power sources such as coal is the smaller production of global warming pollution, but the U.S. still faces depleting national security. Most of the world's oil reserves are in the hands of countries in which radical Islam is on the rise. We're seeing a massive transfer of wealth from consuming countries to producing countries. A transfer of wealth of unprecedented proportions. And when you look at what this money, what this oil money is being used for, let's just take a look at a country like Saudi Arabia. Since 9-11, the increase in oil price has, has driven an increase in their revenue of on the order of half a billion dollars every single day. What that money is being used for is to fund madrasas. Certainly not all of the money, but some of it is being used to fund madrasas, which are schools for indoctrination in radical Islam. It's used to fund terrorist groups. It's used to fund development of weapons of mass destruction. It's not just Iran. Who paid for the Pakistani nuclear program? It was Saudi money. So we're seeing a situation in which the national security vulnerabilities that we face are being fueled by oil. An interview with Carl Amen who has served 30 plus years with Exxon Mobil will summarize these key points on energy independence and national security. How do you think becoming energy independent would affect the national security? It would improve the national security because any time you're dependent on any other countries, you then have to bargain and that also affects security and your safety. Now, many sources have determined that energy independence is desirable, but is it attainable? Let's ask. Is energy dependence a necessary aspect of the current global economy, or could the U.S. eventually achieve ind independence from Saudi Arabia and other countries under OPEC? The uh, International Petroleum Institute just last month announced that the United States can be independent for any oil energy 
because of increased production of shale oil. So we have a very optimistic outlook on the fact that we can become independent from the OPEC producers. Now the real question is, what are the necessary and possible steps the United States can take to achieve energy independence? We should produce more. We should conserve more. We should be concerned about the efficiency of its use. We should find new sources of energy. We should convert the automobile fleet to the extent that we can to an electric fleet. We should continue to invest in the longer stream strategies such as fuel cells and hydrogen. All of those things are necessary. The only way to change the situation is to change the level of demand. We have to focus on the transportation sector though. Stripping oil of its strategic value. What we specifically need to focus on is fuel choice in the transportation sector. And we need to focus on technologies that are available today. Number one, flex fuel vehicles. Every car sold in this country should be a flex fuel vehicle. And now you get to this bizarre sounding figure of 500 miles per gallon of gasoline. That's not 500 miles per gallon. You just made a very tiny sliver of your driving energy petroleum fuel. And most of it is other sources of energy. So we need to repeal the tariff on ethanol imports. There's some 100 countries in the world with a suitable climate for growing sugarcane, many of them poor countries on the receiving end of U.S. development aid. What a better way to help them rise out of poverty than help them sell into the global transportation fuel market by opening up our market to them. Presented with the question of energy independence, Pennsylvania Congressman Jim Gerlach agrees with its importance. He believes the best way to deal with the situation is an all-of-the-above method, combining many solutions. The U.S. should expand domestic drilling as well as fostering renewable resources. If we can accomplish this, the money will be spent domestically. If we don't do this, we're headed to a world that is significantly more dangerous than the world we're in today, which is already quite dangerous. Overall, the U.S. needs to terminate its reliance on these foreign nations by ending the dependence on oil. The efficiency of gas usage in transportation and buildings must evolve, as well as the overall decrease in usage. Looking towards the future to find and refine new sources of alternative energy and renewable energy will further independence. We must act now before it's too late.